Going live does not have to be difficult. It's frustrating when you watch a YouTube video and don't quite get the answer that you're looking for. And the reason probably is because you have a very specific use case. So I wanna help you identify what's important for when you start going live. Yes, there are a bunch of camera options that you can choose from and a bunch of microphone options that you can choose from, but we're gonna make this simple. Three easy steps to start live streaming. So let's first get started talking about equipment. As someone that's been live streaming since 2016, I've seen a lot of equipment. I've purchased my fair share and I've been sent my fair share of equipment to review not only on this channel, but also on my Amazon channel where we get a chance to really test it out in real time. Some of the different camera options that you have access to right now really depend on what you're trying to accomplish. You have wireless camera options like the Logitech Mevos, which is a completely wireless three camera solution option. You have PTZ cameras, which allow you to pan, tilt, and zoom. So if you're a one person, solo person operation, you can actually get some camera movement with this type of camera. And then you also have your mirrorless cameras. These can be used for video and photography. So depending on your use case, will help you identify which type of camera to begin with. Then you can begin looking at the different options in that specific category. After you've selected your camera type, what type of microphones do you need? You have microphones that can be used more so for podcasting, close-up speaking. You have handheld microphones like the Shure SM50 which is just a legendary handheld wireless microphone. So if you're gonna be moving around, you definitely want to be able to not be tethered to a desk. But if you don't wanna hold anything in your hand, like I am right now, you can actually use the Shure wireless lapel set, which is a really convenient microphone when you need complete flexibility in your movement and not being tied down to anything. So in the comments below, let me know what type of camera do you think would work best for your situation? And I can provide you suggestions along with the type of microphone that you would be looking to get for your next setup. Now let's talk lighting because it's important to be seen. Hey, I don't have any lighting. If you're in an area that doesn't have the best lighting sources, you will need to invest in some good lighting. Now a couple of them that I use are large soft boxes that's off to my left. I have a panel light that's off to my right. And then I also have little small little lights that help accent backlights and kind of help get rid of shadows. You can also incorporate a little color with some RGB lights like the little small one I have here. These things are small, but they provide a lot of light when they're turned all the way to 100% brightness. Your lighting will definitely depend on your environment. Light sources can be large, but you can also find a plethora of lights that are smaller in size, but provide the light source that you actually need to light up the whole entire area so that you're visible visible and the objects that you might be featuring on your live stream are visible as well. Now in the description of this video, I'm going to link to the cameras, the microphones, and even the lights that I have in this specific setup, along with some other suggestions that I think fit different price point budgets and different use case scenarios. Now that we have step one out of the way, let's move on to step two, which is our live streaming software. Right now, there are a lot of options in the marketplace. Just choose one of them. The important thing is that you actually get started with live streaming. Here are some things to consider when choosing your platform for live streaming. It's important to know that some live streaming softwares do require that they be installed physically on your computer. And if this is the case, that means you need to take that computer with you everywhere you go. Now, typically these softwares have more flexibility. They allow you to do more in their feature set. They are more complex to learn. But if you are going deep into live streaming, that might be something to consider. One of my favorite live streaming platforms is called Wirecast. I've been using that for years because it's a very robust platform. However, it's not easy to teach someone how to use that software, especially if they're not going to be live streaming on a regular basis. And if I don't have my computer with me that Wirecast is installed on, I can't use Wirecast. So one of the alternatives is to consider a web-based or cloud-based software that allows you to live stream from anywhere in the world. All you need is access to the internet and be able to pull up that specific website. BeLive is a great 
platform that allows you to not only connect your Facebook and your YouTubes of the world, but you can also connect platforms like Amazon. And I like the fact that you can live stream on multiple platforms at the exact same time. And it's just a matter of clicking a few buttons. So using a cloud-based live streaming software gives you more flexibility and where you can live stream from. And quite frankly, they're a little bit simpler to use because there's not so many buttons that will just confuse you just by looking at it. If you want to check out the BeLive software, I have a special link in the description for 14 day access to it. Highly encourage you to play around with it and use the software during that trial period so that you can see all the different features that you can use and it just makes live streaming a lot easier. Now that we've understood a little bit more about equipment and the software that we need to actually live stream, let's talk about the platforms, the destinations of our live streams. If you're gonna be doing long form content, long form live streams, consider before you start live streaming, are you gonna be doing more long-term live streams or short short form live streams. This will help you determine the best platform for your audience. But one of the best recommendations for going live is to not randomly go live, but rather to schedule your live streams in advance. They can just quite frankly be more tuned in because they know and are expecting you to be live at a certain time. This can all be done in the BeLive software, which is another reason that I highly recommend that you check it out to make live streaming that much easier. It's time to start going live. Don't worry about perfection at this point. Just start live streaming and you'll learn more and more along the way. You'll begin to level up on your equipment. You'll begin to learn different features that you can use in your software. And you'll begin to live stream to multiple destinations to expand your message all at the same time. Hope this video has been helpful for you and look forward to seeing you in the next one.